everyone will live in hope that the trial will go their way. And then there's that dawning realisation that it hasn't. You're going to prison. Some of them are still in shock that they've been sentenced. The first time you came in here, you just never forget. It's scary. My heart was in my mouth. I was shaking. I don't think you realise what the prisoners actually go through behind closed doors. People say it's a holiday camp, but it's not. Ready for your bending and tools, guys. They just count the days down till they get out. Buzzing for it. Buzzing to get out. One for liberation. You feel like going on your hands and knees and kissing the pavement. Thornton Vale Women's Prison houses around 300 inmates, including young offenders aged between 16 and 21. I'm here for like um, police assaults and like a breach of the peace. It's because when I start drinking, like a blackout and can't remember stuff and just keep getting into trouble. It's Vicky's first 24 hours in prison. She's been in, in and out a couple of times, so um, very quiet girl, you know. Seems to have a, a lot going on. But uh, when you get chatting to her, you know, she's got, she'll chat away at you. Vicky's problem started when she was 10. Mostly when, like, my dad left and my grand died. I just went down a hell of it and like that's when I started drinking and self-harming. Yeah, I got kicked out of school for assaulting the head teacher and stuff like that. I don't want to be one of them people that's in and out like all the time. I don't want to be like that. Once she's gone through the admission process, Vicky is taken to Sky House, the young offender unit. Thank you, one away. You okay? One away. Sitting in that van for the time, just go wait there for us. This is what happened. Oh, it was good to put it in the world, Mum. Now that Vicky is 21, she could be reclassified as an adult prisoner. But it's been decided she should stay in the young offenders unit for now. Phone your mum when you go out. Tell her here. She was at the court. She was at the court as well. Oh, that was all right. Young people in here are like young people outside. They're impulsive, they're daft, they don't think before they speak or act. That, that's just young people for you, you know, I mean, most, most of us have been through that, you know, in our, in our teens and early 20s, you know, where you lie awake all night thinking, I wish I hadn't said that, I wish I hadn't done it. Our young people are no different. Really miss my mum and... Do you know how she felt about it? Uh, she's hard with them not out there getting into trouble. I used to be out and I'm drinking a lot. She used to get worried because sometimes I wouldn't go home and she would just be worried and that. And she didn't know if the police were going to come to her door saying I'd been arrested or something had happened. So. I'm like strutting down there. Full of pace. I think the circumstances that drive women to coming to Court and Vale in the first place are things like poverty, um, lack of ambition and aspiration for their, their own lives. It's being caught up in offending at a very young age, being caught up in substance and alcohol misuse at a very young age. He's going to a festival thing tomorrow. Like when I'm out there and if I'm drinking, I get like, don't know what could happen to me because of my blackouts and 
I've just, it's not only worry on me, it's worry for my mum as well, and I don't want to put that on her. Look, she's got enough stress to deal with. You're going to get put round to unit one, which you know that, because mm -hmm. you're convicted. You're going to get, get my stuff out, Mum. Aye, of course you mm -hmm. can. By the time they come to us at, say, the age of 17, 18, 19, they've already got a seven, eight, nine year history of not being in school, not being in employment, of substance misuse, of offending behaviour. Like, I need to stop my drinking, because that's what lands me in here. Like, I probably wouldn't... There's not been a time when I've been sentenced where I've not been drinking involved. Yeah. It might surprise people to know that alcohol is a bigger factor in offending for women than is drug use. And I sometimes wonder if it's because um, alcohol is a stimulant and alcohol uh, causes you to drop your inhibitions, so it encourages people to behave in ways that they wouldn't behave if they weren't drunk. So more of our women have come in here as a result of alcohol and drugs. <laughs> <laughs> People make out as if, oh, you go to the jail, you'll get assaulted, you'll get beaten up and stuff, but it's none like that. Hey, Rumi. <laughs> There's quite a lot of support and there's quite a lot of things you can do like to get qualifications and training and that. So it's quite important because if I don't get help, then I'll just keep drinking and I'll keep falling back in the stuff and just keep coming back here. And I don't want that. Right, Mum, you're going to go and in here. I'm hoping to get a job on Friday with the laundry. Get, get you out of the block so you're not, look when you're locked behind your door, you're not sitting thinking all the time because if you think too much, like, look I do, I get depressed and because I've got bad depression and my depression gets quite bad. What sort of life would you like when you get out of here? What are your hopes? Well, I would like to try and get a job because that would keep my mind off like drinking and drugs and stuff because and, I don't want to like, drink all the time because I've seen what it's did to some of my family and it's no nice. I've got ID and all that, so... I'm going to try and stay out and not come back and I'm going to do my alcohol counselling and stuff like that. For my family and that and my mum's not been keeping well and I want to be able to look after my mum and that. I think everybody deserves a second chance. It's about giving people choices. It's about giving choices that they didn't have before. And a wee bit of hope. When I was growing up, I probably passed here hundreds of times. And you just thought that's what all the bad guys are.
my first day here, I'll never forget. The halls were very, very volatile then. There was quite an incident. Um, the alarm bell went and they had to lock the place up. When there's an incident in the scale of over 300 prisoners out, scared, shit scared, shit scared. Oh, no, I'm not fear to admit that to this day. It was terrifying. I've had a lot of prisoners went out here, really fit, really good, positive manner about them, going to do good things, and they've come in months later. You can tell they've not been looking after themselves. And most of them are embarrassed about it. We tend to take everybody we can in here. But Berlin rises to the challenge, it always kind of has done, and it always will. Um, I don't know what to do without this place. People say it's had its day and it's antiquated. The buildings might be old, some of the staff might be old, but we serve a purpose. For us in reception, it's a conveyor belt, it's a process that we have to do and we have to get every part right. Every, every job has a, has a reason behind it and we need to do one before we do the next. They go to a member of staff and get a rub down. We do a quick rub down search, make sure there's nothing else in our pocket. And they put it in a holding cell. The term they use, I believe, although I wouldn't use it myself, is uh, a dog box. We class them as holding cubicles. They're not luxurious. They serve a function. Um, keep everybody safe, keep the prisoners safe, keep the staff safe. Gordon has been sentenced for housebreaking. His intention? To steal car keys. My biggest problem has been cars. It's been a main focus in my life. See if I put my focus on something else I've done for cars, I'd have probably done all right. I was glad like driving things like Ferraris, Aston Martins and that, but I suppose the RS6, I've not done RS6 yet. <laughs> we'll see yet. There's no point lying. If I get a chance in an RS6, I'll take it. Ramos goes when I'm on the street no. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I don't but when you're in the gym you, you go on the course you not you you have to reflect on these things and I'm not saying it's good or bad but it's obviously not good. You know what I mean? But it's definitely it's just it's just the way it is. You know what I mean? The MD that's had it done to them all hate me. Without a doubt. Aye, without a doubt. But there's, there's nothing I can do about that. I know I can stop. <laughs> but as I say, there's, there's no point kidding on saying oh, I've got to stop because I don't see it happen for a while. Every admission that comes in gets an interview. 
for interviewing me make sure they're fit to be detained or if they need a wee bit of extra special looking after or if they're suicidal. That's the bit we need to get right because that's the bit that could cost somebody their life. How happy today? Right, fine, man. How happy you would expect? No. I've probably spent more time in prisons than I even spent at home. You know what I mean? I came for a good home, came for a good area. I wish I had a good relationship with my mum, but I've known. I thought she can't, she can't deal with me bills in and out of jail. It's just, just non-stop for her, you know what I mean? Constant disappointment. After they've spoken to, to what a member of our staff, they then go to the health centre and they are dealt with by the NHS. We're just interested in getting detoxes for prisoners that are on uh, drugs are in the methadone programme on the outside. Um, drugs are a huge, kind of, a huge issue right across the kind of west of Scotland. In the jail, I can live without drugs for months and months and months and months. Years even. I can't live a couple of days in the street without drugs. You know what I mean? Just feet hit the street and that's what I think of it. I can't find a way of staying away from them for good. No, I mean, I've, I've got anger towards the system, but it's, it shouldn't really be there, no, I mean, because I put myself in a situation where I've spent most of my life in the jail. I'm the one that chooses to take the drugs, and I know that when I'm on the drugs, most of the time people don't want to be running about anyway, you know what I mean? So it's not that like it makes my life any better, it just constantly makes it worse. And, I mean, I've got a daughter who I've not been a father to watch well. You know I mean, I wish I could be, but I've just, I've just never been in a situation where it would really be a good environment for her to be in a book, you know what I mean? And just, and I, I don't know how to change that either. I just hope one day she'll forgive me for what I've done. You know what I mean? But while she does, I know it's a different matter. Step search area is a bit Serves a purpose, shall we say. It's not the, not the greatest place to work. You've got to watch people getting undressed and check their clothing and make sure they've got nothing secreted anywhere they shouldn't. It's part of the job. There's really nothing you can do about it, but just grin and bear it. Like it or lump it. There's worse jobs out there. No, there isn't. Sorry, there isn't at all. What caught me out this morning? The sheriff. Used to be a lot worse. Used to actually make you stand and squat for, what, 30 seconds. You know what I mean? And when you're a young offender, it's, you know, it's, it's quite a, a harsh way, especially if you've never had to date a phone, you know what I mean? Strip you naked and then you just make you stand out there and do this, do that, and you're like, oh my God. They're making sure you've not got hands with lock backs and that, and bank. Well, to bank something is when you've got a bit of drugs or a blade, you wrap it up and you have to... <laughs> you have to put it up your backside. That's, that's exactly what it is, you know what I mean? And, and it happens. I won't mail on you with other believe. You know what I mean? You ever done it? Mm-hmm. 
<lacht> ah, ich bin dann nein. Ja, das ist es ist kreis auf new deal kreis ohne ein das was man noch in D Hall houses Berlin's first night center where new prisoners are monitored closely take them to the first night centre and there they get allocated a cell and they get given pants, socks, jail clothing, a tea and coffee pack, they put in their cell for the night. You know, it's, it's just a way of life for a lot of them and a lot of them are better off in here than what they are on the outside, which is a, unfortunately a sad, sad thing to say, but it's true. They've got a tea pack and everything to eat, and they've got your bedding, and that's all, just your sheets on your bedding as well. Uh, you'll, be, you'll turn up later on, right, about half past five. Brand new, mate. Um, you get the chance to use a telephone call to phone your next of kin, just to let them know you're in custody. Okay? Have you anything else? It's not a life, but it is an existence. It's definitely not a life. People say to me, oh, you're looking if you just took a bag of hair on the store, and I'm like, it's not, it's not high. Like what I Having previously served three remand sentences, this is Christine's fourth time in Cornton Vale. She's waiting in reception to go through the admission process. Uh, no, the remand, easy, you know what I mean? Like, you just run up and get a half of people and all that. And obviously, but the thing is, obviously, you don't know if you're going to get it or not. But you just get on with it. And obviously, this is the first time I've been in conviction. Yeah. My lifestyle was a bit chaotic, you know what I mean? I was in hostels all my days. Uh, and then, obviously, I've had a few flats, which was good. Uh, but I got evicted last year, so that when I got evicted last year, that was basically just the start of everything going wrong again. Yeah. The charges I was up for were uh, two of them were quite serious. One was a assault to injury, the other one was a domestic. Uh, and the assault to injury one, they also threw a breach of peace on me, plus vandalism for uh, kicking a laptop, kicking my ex's brother's laptop and snapping that in half. But I can't remember that because I was that out my face. I just want to go to sleep. Drug and alcohol addictions are definitely the major factor in bringing people into prison. I think that addiction plays it's a huge part in it. Drug addiction seems to take hold of people and it's that's what brings them in. I'm going to keep away from alcohol, but that wasn't a problem for me there, so... And then obviously legal high, I didn't stay away from him too. I'm going to cancel this if I get one. I know, if I'm going to have drugs, if I'm going to have stay away from drugs, it's definitely one of... It's a positive place to be, because you do have doctors and workers and professionals here that can definitely help them. I'm the prison GP at HMP Quentin Vale. One of the new challenges we've seen over the last 12 to 18 months has been the presentation of legal highs. Now, drugs that we've seen for many a year, heroin, Valium, cocaine, methadone, alcohol, we are familiar with their presentation. The legal high substances are a whole vast band of substances that are changing on a daily basis, even within the same packet. And both ourselves, hospital doctors, community doctors, are faced with a new challenge. 
Um, we've seen some extremely unwell patients on the back of legal highs and because none of us have got the experience of how to manage that yet, um, that can be very difficult, we're all learning. I like them, I can't say I don't like them, right, because I do like them. But it's like, <clears throat> the effect it has on you, you don't even realise it. And then you see other people, and like, they're the ones that are injecting it and all that, obviously, and they've got holes and all that in them. I don't like to go back down that road. It makes you lose a power away, they end up lazy, and don't do it, and you're just lying about as if there's nothing to do. And before you know it, like, if I'm in my pals, and we're smoking it, we'll just like, lie about and go to sleep, and then you'll wake up, and it's like, the full house is a mess, you don't even care. The full house is just upside down because you don't care. You, you don't care about your appearance and all that. You don't care about the way you talk to people. All you care about is how you're going to even get that next gram of legal high. That's all that's saying you're here about it. With all the paperwork done, Christine is admitted to prison and taken to her new cell. I've got scores, just covered up your spine. Uh, my horn, I don't even know what to call that, man. I just see the form left on. So I see all the time. People always think that I'm hiding it, but I'm no, I don't care. If anybody doesn't like it, they don't need to talk to me. They don't like it, and I'm going to take a funny fuck to us, to be honest with you. I don't, it's not going to affect me in my life. I'm not going to see them again, or if I see them again, I'm not going to talk to them, mama. So, no, it doesn't bother me at all. You've been up to push before. But the roof door, uh -huh. I've only done the man. Right. I can do everything that everybody else can do. There's no one thing I can think of that I can't do because of my horn that anybody else can do. I can do absolutely everything with it, so it doesn't bother me at all. It's definitely noisier here than it is working with guys. There's a lot more noise. Gossip, chatter, laughing or shouting, it's, you know, the noise they can make is sometimes incredible. I felt plenty of your artists were screwed to heat, but I never. And obviously, I just started drinking all that all the time, and then we've been in hostels. My lassies ate my boys too. My lassies settled with my lassies ate, so I'm quite happy with it. But I don't mind my lassies staying my lassies. I can phone them when I want, I can like, go and see them and all that. So I'm no bothered about my, my, my wee boys only two, and I had them until the high last year. So. That's what always gets to me. Like maybe last year I'm used to not having a with me, but it's as if I'm still not used to having my wee boys not with me. And obviously that is my fault. I shouldn't have went back down the road I did go down. Transforming lives and unlocking potential is the people take them as slogans and all. You know, the, some people would think you know guffaw at them if you like, but if you think about what we do, that's exactly what we're trying to do, and it's. I don't feel any kind of shame in the fact that we put it out there that that is what we're trying to do. You know, I go and do everything right, and not just for me, for my wings and my family. And that's how I make my mouth proud instead of making everybody like a strangle the life out of me. <laughs> One, two, three, wait. A lot of people will find that, oh, right, you know, this was the wake up call maybe that they needed. Or, you know, this was this will be the last time that they come back. This time was bad enough that they don't want to come back. But it's not really what we don't... Their punishment is losing freedom, so we're not here to punish them further. We're here to try and help them, you know, so that when they go back out into the community, 
they can function well and they become an active member of that community. It's not about us making their lives miserable, which is certainly not what we strive to do. Prisoners' personal cash, it's, we pay it into them for working. So, you know, be it seven pounds a week or something like that. They can buy their tobacco, there's certain sweets and things that they all like. As soon as I came in, I said I wanted a job and I wanted the education. So I'll be doing that because I'm crap at maths and I want to go and see if I can get any qualifications while I'm here. I want the education, I want a job and all. So I don't want to be one of the ones that are in here and they're just sitting about in a cell doing nothing all day. Obviously I'll get tired, it depends what job they give me, but I'm not doing the laundry. I done the laundry last year and I chucked it after three days because of the heat and all that. They were raging with me. But uh, I wouldn't mind actually doing the pantry one. That'd be quite good. I'll not be doing the garden room one, but no. It's probably going to be too cold sometimes, so I'll not be doing the garden room one. If they get cash in an account, they get a sheet which will tell them what they can buy and how much that is going to cost. And they mark off, it says at the top what they have to spend, they mark off and then generally they'll come and ask us for how much have I spent there. They see it as a, a kind of a necessity, their tobacco and things like that, but there's a few treats on there that people might think, oh, why would they be getting that? But you'd have to say, why not? I mean, it's a packet of biscuits or sweets or something like that. So it's a good day for them. They seem like they, they love their shop day. It's all you hear about the whole morning. Can we go and get shop? Tobacco, fag peoples. Tobacco, fag peoples. A stamp. <laughs> don't even know what the stamp's for yet. Probably that way other hinges. Uh, a stamp, crisps and juice and humbugs. And toilet I had to get dodgy and shampoo. I've had a hairbrush, but that's no on that shop sheet. That's only makeup one. So I'll probably be stuck with a comb now. I can't save up. <laughs> What's going to happen when I get out? <laughs> I'll be on my head until I get out. I will be on my head until I walk out the door. When I go out, I'm going to be homeless for a start. My pals are now. They are. They're in the legal high, man. They don't want to legal high, you know. Uh, obviously, I was on that and all, but. I don't, I'm not going back out to go and get addicted to stuff and all that again. I'm, I've been saying this and saying it, saying it. I don't want to go back to that. I want to try and do something different, but as I said, I don't know where I'm going to end up. Part of the job that really makes you feel like you've accomplished something is if, if you think you've made a difference to just one person, even if that's in 10 or 20 years, that they will not come back to prison, it makes everything you're doing worthwhile. Uh, a brand new jail, it's built back in 2012 with a lot more modern facilities and a lot of your older jails. Lomos is pushing the way forward for trying to basically stop prisoners re-offending and addressing their offending behaviour with the programmes and what's an offer to them within Lomos. It's a good jail. It's Barry's last 24 hours in prison. I don't think people realise that your family's doing a jail sentence with you. Doing the uh, four months of theft, cut a breach of the peace at Wilmos Prison, Glasgow. Bumped into a couple of people, wrong people, took a cut of alum, and then the next thing I, I kind of woke up in a jail cell. If I hadn't took Valium at that time, the chances is I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you. It's 
after, like you were 21, it was easy. It was, you thought it was a bit of a laugh, a bit of a joke, but I think the older you get, it, the sentences are only harder, but the end them's harder. It's mere, it's mere psychology, I don't know, it's, it's kind of hard to explain. <laughs> I don't know what trouble it would be. <laughs> it's just calling you to get caught. You, you get by. You've got to get by. Let's face it, you're here. You've, there's no other way. You've got to do it, and that is that's the end of it. Barry's Barry. He's, he's like that every sentence. The first few weeks when he comes in, he has a nightmare. Um, and then he'll never sell out, and he's no cost to staff for any of his work parties he's ever worked in, right up to... It's, it stays the same, basically, up to the day of release. A lot of my offending was basically to fund a drug habit. Heroin, when you're on it, it's not something that you can either take it or leave it. It's, it's not like that, you need it. Just to kind of operate, just to feel normal when you're through day-to-day -day life. I can't even get the last time I've done a sentence without an on one death. I think every time I do come in, you always do miss your family. At the end of the day, I think I'm, I'm a mommy's boy, whatever way you look at it. My mother brought us up, she brought it, my other two brothers up. Usually when I phone, if I'm back in the jail, I usually get a right, a right ball on that for. She'll maybe fall out me for the first week or two, but as she keeps telling me, like, you're my son, and that's, I'll be there regardless. I think if my mother was near, I think I'd, I would be, I think I'd be lost. A lot of boys, if they're here, they've not got their family. I'm one of the lucky ones that actually still have got a family. Barry doesn't really change when he's due to get out. Barry will still go up and go to his work right up to the day that he's lived or his, his release date. A lot of people just see, see in this case, a green jumper, a green T-shirt. That's, that's it, you're not half right away. But in the day, not always, there are not all bad people at the end of the day. It's, some of you here for one drum the half time, and that's the next time you're in here for maybe the next couple of months or the next couple of years. Some of you are maybe here for life for one stupid thing. That's just, just the way life is at the moment. I've got to do something, I'm, I'm 35 now. Or it might not seem old, but it's. It's too old to be still doing this, and then it. This is Barry's last night locked up in his cell. This is fucking annoying, but what is that bed, isn't it? This time when I get released, it's... I'll go down and stay with my... I'll probably go down and stay with my mother for a while. Usually, if I'm staying with my mother, I'm, yeah, I usually keep it straight in there. Ah, there's no plans for end that weekend. The end of the day, I think if I... I think if I went out... I did not right back then. I think I've got, I think I've got everything anyway. Ah, boy, here. 
in that cup now, mate. There's a spoon in there. You plug in there, partner, right? When you're walking down to reception, it's, I, I don't care how many sentences you've done, that's when the nerves and the butterflies start kicking in. It's just hard to explain. It's not a worry, but it's, it's a bit of a worried with excitement kind of thing. It's, it's so strange. End of the day, if you know you're getting out and you've got nothing to get there to then I say it's worry. But if you're going out and you've got a family and that, it is, it's excitement, but you're, you're not really thinking about it too much. You're just glad to, to go out and see things again. Hey? You're going to the plan for today? Nah, nah. Right down the road, fucking peace and quiet, so I'll just glad to get out and fucking back to the back of my mouth. Well, you have the time. You're in for that long, you get back into your local thing and there's buildings where buildings were there and there's shops open there. It's it's surprisingly how quick one thing can change in a matter of say two, six months, whatever. It's no fucking shops, is it? Hey, man. Right, I'm gonna think I'm really like now if it's my coat. The liberation, uh, they're getting loved. They're basically taking them up to reception where the prisoners will be searched. It's changed into their own clothes, their prison clothing, collect any monies or anything like that. They're due to be given on release. You keep signing there for me, that's for your money. Uh, when a prisoner's getting released, they'll get a liberation grant of £72 and any money that they've also got in their, their own accounts. If they've been working, their money sent in, that'll all be given it to them on the day of their liberation. That's your real Barry, that's your fear bus. Um, and a travel warrant. Barry, that's that amended for you, all right? Brilliant. You'll get your proper to me up the front, all right? Aye, Snap, all. All right. See you later. Yeah, that's Johnny. Aye, when you get out the door, it's... It's, 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 a, it's a strange feeling. Somewhere to go when you leave here? I will, I'll get some sort of damn going to my mum's soon right. anyway. Oh yeah, don't get me wrong, you're, you're glad, you're glad that you're, you're seeing the back there. But at the same time, that's you, you're out in the street, standing at a bus stop, there's 70 odd quid in your pocket. And that, that's you going to start a new life. It can be fucking terrifying. Mm -hmm. What about this, you want that? Yeah, I thought it was that. It's a bit later, I think, Oh, eyes for the courts, ah, yes, right. Hey, thanks. All the best. Cheers. <laughs>